Good morning all, it's Log from Log's Carving Club, and today I'll be making a magnetic bottle opener. Here's a clip of it to increase my audience retention. Uh, so to make it, I'll use two tools. What? You normally only use one. Well, I'm sorry, I got an orbital sander. But you can still do everything I'll be doing in this video with just a Dremel rotary tool. So here we are. I have three pieces for this build, or carving, I'm not sure what you'd call it. I have this cutoff of mahogany from a previous project that's 9 centimeters in width. Uh, about 22 centimeters in length and three quarter inches thick, which is about two centimeters. I use centimeters just because this is a cutoff, so the dimensions aren't as imperial friendly as normal. The two other pieces here are this bottle opener and this large magnet. The opener will obviously be mounted to the front, and the magnet will be hidden behind the wood so that when you open the bottle, the cap will fall and get caught on the wood by the magnet. Bottle openers like this are sold all over the place, but I wanted to make my own, so here we are. This is my first time making one, so be ready to see me make a ton of mistakes. The general plan is to cut out a line that frames the wood, and fill it with epoxy, and also cut out a big 14 into the center here, um, and also fill that with epoxy. The 14 is the apartment I'm renting with my friends this semester. I've measured it all out, so there's a half centimeter of bevel around the edges and half a centimeter of dead space, and then half a centimeter that I'll fill with epoxy around the border. The bottle opener itself will align with these red dots down the center line, and the magnet will go onto the back of the piece in a hole I'll bore out, so it's both hidden and closer to the surface. Okay, to start out I'll be using a Dremel flex shaft on my Dremel 4300, and I need to cut a semi-straight line onto the side of the lumber, so I'll use the Dremel 801 at 30,000 RPM. I have a video on this accessory, I really think it's great for stuff like this. I'll put Amazon affiliate links for all my tools and bits in the description below. Those links give a little commission to me, but the cost is the same for you, so I guess it's a little less money for the man, you know? Anyways, if you're following along here, orbital sanders and rotary tools can be dangerous, so read and follow the user manuals and safety instructions of your tools. Also, you don't want sawdust or epoxy in your eyes or lungs, so wear an appropriate mask, eye protection, and hearing protection. Let's all stay safe, yeah? Okay, so here comes the orbital sander. You can use the Dremel, whether it be a drum sander or the disc sander, but this orbital sander is so fast and provides a much better straight line than the Dremel can, since it has such a large surface area. I'm using 80 grit here. I also used it to carve out the bevel along that half centimeter marking. We can get to the epoxy border now. I'll cut that out with these three bits since I really want it straight. I'll start the cut with an engraving piece to try and get the straightest line possible started. I'll then make that a little bit deeper with the 562 tile cutting bit. And to finish the groove, I'll use this router bit to even out the cut. I used all three of these at 30,000 RPM, by the way. I'm shooting for about half a centimeter in depth for the final groove. By the way, everything in this video from the hardware to the wood, to even the felt I'll put on the back at the end I got from Home Depot. So you can absolutely get all this from probably any big box store. The only exception is I got the epoxy on Amazon, um, but that's probably also at those stores, but I'll link it in the description just in case. The router bit was a bit of a gamble, but even with a couple hiccups it still turned out well. Now I can carve out the 14. I printed it out as you can see and glued it where I want it for easy stenciling. I'll have a video on how I do this eventually, but it's pretty self-explanatory, so you probably don't need to watch that. I use an engraver to trace along the border of the letters, and then I remove the paper with the sander. I use the orbital sander here again to do that. Okay, now I can go in with the 561 and the engraver again in combination to clean up the 14 and get about half a centimeter in depth. While I engrave, I'll explain the orbital sander. I've always wanted to keep this channel very basic in terms of tools, since I want what I make to be achievable for people who just have a rotary tool. If you're already commenting, get a saw or get a CNC machine, now you know. I spend too much already on takeout to be stocking up on big tools. To me there's something so frustrating about clicking on a DIY how-to video and seeing that the DIY in question requires a shop with five grand or more in tools. Like, that doesn't make sense. But my exception here will be sanding, since it's my least favorite part of carving. It's just so boring. It takes so long, and the Dremel sanders are not super durable, which gets expensive, so the orbital sander just makes sense. Hopefully with it I can do more projects and make larger pieces, and I can use it to flatten surfaces, which is really hard to do with just a Dremel. Again, you can absolutely do any sanding necessary without one of these, but I'll be using it from time to time now. Not to mention they really aren't that expensive if you get a cheap one like this. 
All right, so sorry for the long explanation if you weren't interested. Uh, the next step here will be to carve out the hole for the magnet. I've already started it, as you can see, but I basically just trace the magnet at the bottom of the back of the piece to cut out. The magnet is one centimeter thick and the wood is two centimeters thick, so to get as close to the surface as I'm willing to, so that it's as strong as it can be, I'm cutting this hole down one and a half centimeters deep, and that leaves just half a centimeter, so it needs to be perfect, hence the routing attachment I'm using. I have yet another video on how to use this attachment, so check that out if you'd like. I'm using the 561 multipurpose cutting bit here, and I did two passes before getting the final depth. The next step was to carefully cut out the guidelines I left, and I used the Dremel 561 again for that. I also cleaned it up a little bit with the 562 on the bottom and the sides, but this hole just had to fit the magnet and not burst through, and it's not visible from the front so aesthetics aren't super important back here, and I'll cover it up later anyways. I'm also going to cut out about half a centimeter to fit these small magnets so the whole thing can mount onto a fridge. The large magnet is somehow only magnetic on one side, so it alone doesn't work to stick it to a fridge. I used the 561 and the router attachment again for this. I held the big magnet in the back with my hand and gave it a test, and sure enough it wasn't strong enough to catch a falling cap, which is pretty annoying, but it's all part of the process. I looked around and found this neodymium magnet, which is crazy strong, and since the big magnet has a space in the center, I figured I could just put it in there and engrave a little deeper into the center of the hole. So back to testing, I held it up to the back and... It works now. Great. And thankfully it didn't puncture through the front. So now I'm going to use a silicone carbide grinding stone to smooth out the inside of my engravings. I use that around 10,000 RPM. And also I'll be using these buffing wheels to remove any unwanted wood strands at about the same RPM. Now we can pour the epoxy. I'm using this brand from Amazon, but any epoxy should do, so just follow the instructions on whatever you buy. This one calls for a 1 to 1 ratio, and after mixing a while, I'll add this mica-based silver pigment to try and match the bottle opener. I used a lot of pigment since there isn't a lot of depth and I don't want to be able to see through the epoxy and see the wood underneath. I'll try and pour pretty evenly, but any spillover I can sand off later. I use a butane torch to pop any bubbles, and I'll let this sit for like three days to make sure it's fully cured, since the pour is pretty shallow. Alright, after three days it looks good. There's a tiny bit of spillover, but that's okay. I'll sand down everything with the orbital sander from 80 grit to 220 grit, and then finally 400. The steps where you really get to see how well you kept your engraving straight. So now we can finish the wood, I'll be using this teak oil finish, but any finish should probably be fine here. I think this one's got some nasty fumes, so I'm wearing all my PPE. I normally use either mineral oil or a mixture of mineral oil and beeswax, but I like this finish since it waterproofs the wood pretty well. Also I don't need a stain since I'm using wood that I think looks good on its own. And this is always one of my favorite steps when you can finally see the finished color. Follow the instructions on your finish because this one took a couple days to dry.
Okay, now we can add the hardware. I drilled a couple pilot holes for the bottle opener first. And yes, I measured them before drilling. And then I tried to use this wood glue for the magnets, but it didn't go so well. The magnets sat too deep in their holes, and since the glue was thin, it wasn't hanging onto them, so they were moving all over the place. So I had to wipe up as much as I could, run to the store, get a stronger and thicker glue, and then I put in a little glue at the base of the holes, just so it could harden a couple hours before I rested the small magnets on top with more glue, so that they ended up closer to the surface. I also weighed it down prior to adding the small magnets so the big magnet could drive level. Cough, cough, hint, hint. Please. And after I got those little magnets in too, and then let them dry, I screwed on the bottle opener, and it looked really nice, so I went to finally test the opener. And the top magnets were too weak, so the bottle would just pull it off the fridge. Again, all part of the process here. So I grabbed another neodymium magnet, which is stronger than the small ferrite magnets, and marked on a drill bit with some tape how far in to drill. Of course, the hole I drilled ran right under the screw for the bottle opener, so I made a different hole higher up. And then I cleaned up the hole with the Dremel 561 and some buffing wheels until it fit the magnet well, and then glued it in. And now you might be thinking, hey, the back of that's so ugly. To which I say, hey, you know, it's been through a lot, don't be rude. No, I'm just kidding. Um, so I found this self-adhesive felt and cut it out to cover the entirety of the back of the bottle opener. Which worked perfectly, and it looked a lot more professional than the non-slip pads I was originally going to add. And there we have it, our complete magnetic bottle opener. Here it is on the fridge, moment of truth. Nice. This will be a great addition for my apartment, and I'm sure my roommates will appreciate it. Non-slip pads probably would have been nice to help it stay in place better, but I think it's good enough as is. It can even handle a ton of caps at once before needing to remove them. And no, I didn't drink all of those for this video. I have a cap collection, which, by the way, I'm trying to think of a project to use them for. So let me know if you have any ideas in the comments. I was thinking maybe a chessboard or something. Okay, so before I end this video, some people have commented in the past that they followed along with these videos, and they wanted to show me. So if you have, feel free to send me a picture to this email on the screen. Also, please try to only send pictures of the things that I covered in this channel. And then in the email, please let me know if I can include that picture that you send at the end of a future video, and whether or not you'd like your first name or initials on there with it. If you don't mention either, I probably won't include it. And I get a lot of spam, so I might not end up including your picture if you send one. So no promises, unfortunately. I'll also respond to as many emails as I can, but if you do have questions, it's probably easier to leave them in the comments so other people can see them as well. But yeah, since this channel is called Logs Carving Club, I may as well make it feel more like a club by having this so that you guys can share your creations with the other viewers of this channel. Alright, well, thank you for watching. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments. Don't email them. And as always, I'll see you next time.